Today we have the Elna Air Electronic TSP. So the machine comes with this uh, plastic shell cover and if we turn the machine around there's a latch here that you pull back and that just releases this flap here. Turn the machine back around and that front cover just slides off. It's a mechanical machine but it's electronically controlled and the foot controller is this little guy here. You'll notice there's no actual power connection there. It's actually a uh, air pump, uh, hence the name Air Electronic. Not sure if you can hear that. pumping air out here. So that uh, pushes a plunger inside the uh, machine there and just acts as a speed controller. And that's neatly raveled up in here. This end just plugs straight into that plug there. Power straight into here. Now to turn the machine on, just flip the switch here. Okay, and you'll also notice that the light's not on. There's actually a little on-off switch hidden under here at the back. Turn the light on. I'll go through some of the controls to start with. So here we've got uh, the stitch selector. So this selects the one through six stitches here and also so that's the the green ones there and you'll also notice there's a buttonhole option there which I'll show you later the buttonholing. This knob here is stitch width so from zero which is straight right up to four and you'll notice there's a green and orange so that means that if you're using the green or the orange stitches which is fairly much all of them uh, you know you want to stay within this region here so for a narrow zigzag you'd probably only go down to say two as a minimum and the widest zigzags four okay and then we've got our five step buttonhole step two three four five and that's a needle right position so if you're on option one which is zigzag or straight so what this means here is you've got one through six for your pattern stitches but no matter what um, where you have the stitch selector if you've got the width down on zero it's just going to sew straight there's no zigzagging at all and that's why we've got straight here one through six the orange is denoting the stretch stitches so that is a straight stretch stitch so that'll be two steps forward one back two forward one back okay over here we've got uh, stitch length so right down probably the minimum would be about a half for satin stitching up to about maybe two and a half three for normal sewing longest stitch length four and here we've got the stretch stitches with a, an adjustment there that you can use to uh, decrease the length of the stitch and increase the length of the stitch there for the stretch stitches and we've got a buttonhole mode here and we've also got reversing if you want to you can have the machine constantly in reverse like that there's also a reverse lever here, so push across for reversing. A speed controller on the front, so that controls the maximum speed. So right up like that, that's if you floor it, it'll do the fastest possible speed the machine can do. You'll notice a little bobbin icon there, that's just to slow the machine down a little bit to make bobbin winding a little bit more uh, manageable. So if you have the speed right down on low, if you floor it, uh, the maximum speed will be quite low. So that's that. 
and on the end here we've got the clutch for disengaging for bobbin winding so it disengages the machine there tighten back up to re-engage two spool holders now around the back here we've got the uh, presser foot lifter and this little extender table here that you can uh, detach there to give you a low profile free arm here okay and I'll just put it back on in the meantime because these holes here are used to mount this edge guide bob and winder here just engage disengage we've got the door here fairly typical elna set up there so let's start with bobbin winding there. I'll disengage the hand wheel here. Pull up the spool holder there. Put your thread on. Come across to the tensioner here. And then back across towards the bobbin winder there. The bobbin on. Just give it a about five five or six I guess and I'm setting the speed control to bobbin winding and engage you'll notice that I don't have to uh, like in some of the other videos you might have noticed that I'll put my finger here just to stop that from bouncing around. Uh, quite often when it's when you're sewing really fast or winding a bobbin very fast, that'll bounce around so much it'll fly off. It's actually starting to there. But yeah. Just with the lower speed, it's a bit more manageable. And that should stop winding when it's finished. There we go. Disengage the bobbin winder bobbin installation and threading. I found that if you've got your spool here and you use the handle it'll actually catch on there and um, put a lot of force on that on that there so I find that this uh, spool holder is actually more convenient. That one there I would only use for twin needle. So bobbin installation here. Let's uh, move that extender out of the way. Open the door so when you pull the thread it should turn the bobbin anti-clockwise. Uh, holes facing up, so likewise when you wind the bobbin, you put the thread on, put the thread on clockwise, holes up, and when you insert the bobbin, holes up again. Elna bobbins are uh, very specific for these models. They have holes on top and no holes on bottom. It's a dead giveaway generally that you've got Elna bobbins okay so oh, a lot of machines take different bobbins uh, it's one thing I see as a mechanic is the a lot of problems are caused by the incorrect uh, bobbins installed I see Beninas come in with Singer bobbins and I see Singers come in with Benina bobbins I see Elnas come in with Singer <laughs> all over the show so it's actually really important to get the right bobbins for your machines uh, you'll find that uh, potentially some of the uh, big chain stores will just give you a bobbin, any old bobbin. You, you do have to specify that you've got a specific model, uh, maybe take in a bobbin with you. Anyway, uh, drop that straight in and thread will come around and into this slot here. And I find it best to stop the bobbin from turning just to get a bit of tension and pull the thread I'm holding the thread back here and then just use my finger to flick the thread in because it's uh, very hard to film inside there what's actually happening I've got this hook and uh, base here out of another machine uh, don't worry, I already had it out. I didn't have to run off and extract it. So <laughs> you'll notice here on this is the tension spring here. 
there's two little fingers that go sort of curl inside there. What can happen if you put the bobbin in and just uh, pull into the slot here, the thread can actually just come out above the spring. It's not actually pulled in to the spring properly. It's coming out the top of it rather than the end. So what I do is I hold pressure on the bobbin here and effectively just holding this thread here is just pushed like that and you can see now that the thread is coming out from between those two little fingers there and that's what you want so you can see that better from the back of the machine to extract the bobbin just pull this little grabber down and and place that in the bobbin hole and let the spring loaded grabber come back up and there's your bobbin and then you can just pull the bobbin off so top threading, needle threading, got the spool on here, come right across and just in between, just around this tensioner here. Oh, I didn't um, show you earlier that that's the uh, thread tension here, this style. So zero, four is about right, you can see it's marked in white there, right up to nine. So we'll start on four and there's a little plate in, in here in the tensioner discs that's for twin needling so you can go either side of this plate for twin needle I won't demonstrate that in this video but you come across here over this little hook down through this little cutout here through the cutout down from right to left under this little arm here up to the take up lever from right to left again just hook it around the back there's a slot in the back here and then down from the take up lever left to right through this loop here and then you can go either on either side of this here either left side or right side it doesn't really matter for a single thread if you're doing twin needle you would thread one to the right and one to the left. And then we just thread straight through the needle. But before I do that, I'll show you the needle insertion. So we've got a standard domestic needle there and got a flat on the back there. So the flat goes to the back of the machine, faces towards the back. So with the needle ready to go in, the flat surface is against my finger there and that goes straight into there. Just be careful not to scrape the needle on anything when you're inserting it. Make sure you've got the screw you know, released off enough to let it freely go up into there. You can feel it hitting the stopper there. That's the other common problem I see with machines is um, needles in back to front and or needles not inserted correctly right up into the hole there. So that's pretty important. And we'll thread front to back. Turn the machine over one revolution to pick up the bobbin thread there. Pull the bobbin thread up through. And, there we go. and just pull that through, lift the foot up again and then just bring both threads back the little top thread will go through a little slot on the foot there uh, the little um, edge guide I talked about before that slots into these holes on the back of the little extender arm there that just um, it's got a little pin here that screws in. You screw that down and you can slide it. And you can choose different holes. So basically just an edge guide. 
an adjustable edge guide. This button here is for a stabilisation arm that pops out. So if I just tip the machine back slightly and hit that button, this whole arm pops out. That's just for um, a little bit more stability. So for basic sewing, straight stitch, uh, we'll choose stitch 1, 0 on the stitch width, and stitch length around about 2.5, so let's try that. I'm um, putting the speed to maximum. Quite a nice, uh, smooth, fast machine. These are very well built. I mean, they are the pinnacle of um, of build quality, really, up there with the Berninas and Husqvarna's. Definitely one of the best built machines you can come across, as are a number of different makes and models of this era. It's okay, so um, let's do a zigzag. So I'm taking the stitch width right up to four. Reverse. Okay. Got a nice zigzag there. Tension looks good. Now for satin stitching, um, we'll use this foot here. It's got a bit of room in the back there for the satin stitching to pass through. We'll install that foot. It's just a matter of undoing the mounting screw there. We'll get the needle up as far as we can. Take that. So move, twist the foot to the right and it releases it from the foot bar. And we'll install another foot. Swing it to the left. Tighten that up. And we're ready for some satin stitching there. So I'll leave the width on the widest, uh, but I'll take the stitch length down to around about a half. We'll see how we go there. That seems pretty good there. Nice satin stitch. Uh, they do have a very nice stitch formation, these machines. Now I'll do a narrow zigzag, so I'm just going to take the width down to two. So that's narrow zigzag. So I'm going to work my way through to stitch number two, three, four. So two looks like a sort of an over edging stitch. Same with three, you could use it for blind hemming also. Four is a tricot type stitch, a wavy tricot type. Five uh, overlocking and or blind hemming again. And there's a true tricot type stitch there, zigzag type tricot. And then we've got, I'll work my way back this way for the stretch stitches. And so we'll go stitch number two. That'll be this one here. I'll bring the stitch length up just a tad for that one. Probably around two, stitch length two I would say, probably around. So that's stitch number two. It's probably a good idea to bring the needle out of the work when you're changing the stitches. So we'll go up to three, that's like a over edging. Or blind stitching. Yep. Stitch four, it's a wavy stitch. stitch there. A bit of a funny noise there. I think this this thread is just average thread. It's not anything flash and I think there's a few little knots and bits and pieces. Well not knots. Well if they are knots they're very very fine. Uh, yeah a bit of problem with the thread there I think. 
Anyway, let's do the next one. Number five. Yeah, it looks, looks similar to this stitch here, but it's it's actually the other way. I'm sewing in a different direction, so it's... Uh, and it's slightly closer as well. And the last one is the tricot. So a tricot is basically just three stitches in a zig and a zag. So there's stitch one on the zig, stitch two on the zig, stitch three on the zig, and then one on the zag, two on the zag, and three on the zag. So that's tricot. It's it's actually for sewing tricot material. It's like a um, elast very elastic, almost ribbed type material, but um, often called a tricot stitch. And then uh, if we go to the stretch section, so turn the stitch length dial around, right around past reversing to stretch. There's a little notch there right in the middle and that will give us because we're on six here it'll give us this stitch here like so so I'm going to adjust the stitch density with the plus and minus here just either side just within the orange portion so let's try it on plus. And then I'll go to negative. Yeah, that's really close. So there we go. We've got um, standard density here. And then the plus density here and the negative density here so it gives you a little bit of adjustment there to suit now I'm just going to put the stitch stretch back to its standard same as what we did with this and go back through some of the other stitches that's number five While I'm here, I'll demonstrate the speed control. So I'm going to put that right down to the lowest position. Then I'm going to floor it. I think that is the best speed control if you want to really take your time. It's electronically controlled too. So an uh, absolute brilliant machine for beginners. You couldn't go wrong for a beginner. Yeah, if you've got someone who's a bit scared of uh, it taking off. I'll just increase the speed a bit. I'm just uh, moving the lever up slowly with my foot flat. Flat out there. So that's stitch five, uh, four and stitch three. Stitch three is kind of like a blanket stitch. You could use it for blanket stitching, uh, maybe even applique. And stitch two. Stitch two. Stitch one. Uh, stitch one is just a um, zigzag stretch. So if we slow that down, you can see what's happening there. Forward, forward, back, forward, forward, back. And that's the same as if you had the stitch width down on zero. It's 
it's sewing straight now, but it's still it's doing the stretch stitch. Back, forward, forward, back. Needle right hand position. I've selected on the width dial. I'll go out a stretch stitch. I'm on about stitch length two and a half there. So that um, you know you could use for getting close to an edge. You're reversing. So we'll just go back to straight stitch and permanent reverse. I'll demonstrate, but we'll just go down the seam a little bit. So quite handy if you want um, permanent reverse, I'm not sure what you'd use it for, but I guess if you've got the option, you can use it. And we'll go back into forward again, just stitch length on about two and a half. And this time I'm going to do a back tack, and that is literally just pushing this across. I'll show you buttonholing now, so we'll bring the needle out, take this foot here off and we'll bring in the, the buttonhole foot. Now there is a subtle difference between these two feet, they look very similar but one, for a start one's got the buttonhole icon on it there. If you turn them over they look quite different underneath, this one's got the cut out here and this one's got little grooves for guiding the buttonhole through there. So let's install the buttonhole foot. First of all, put the stitch selector onto buttonhole here and the stitch width selector onto buttonhole. So blue denotes buttonhole. So step one, two, three, four, and five under here. And also come with the stitch length lever to buttonhole which is just past zero into almost into the reversing. Now you'll also notice there's a lever here, a, um, a knob here. This is for buttonhole density. So we'll we'll match the dots here, blue dot with the black dot there. That just means that the density is the standard. Well, let, let's do the first bar. I'll make it extra long so you can see it. So that's the first bar. It's going to be a big button. Okay. And then bring the needle out and I'm going to Go around to step two on the button selector that I showed you before. That'll do the end bar. Like so. A few stitches there. Up to step three. Good thing about the see through foot is you can see when the end of the button or the start of the buttonhole is coming, so you can get the end bar matched up. there, step four, and then step five for tie off, and I'm just going to go back to step one for the next buttonhole, if you're doing more than one. Now it looks quite wide, that's because I uh, turned the fabric to show you the first bar there, it's really wide. There is an adjustment for that as well, but it's a mechanical inside the lid of the machine, mechanical adjustment. Okay, so that's buttonholing, darning and free motion is done with this specialised foot here and also this little cover here that goes over the feed dogs. So that works in conjunction with this little plate here. It um, goes over the feed dogs here and stops the uh, feed dogs from feeding. So very similar to the likes of a drop feed in other makes and we just attach that, you'll see there's little four little lugs to either side there and they just locate into the these little slots here on the throat plate. So I would um, 
just to save you a bit of hassle uh, re-pulling up that bobbin thread I just thread it the bobbin thread from bottom to top there so that it lines up just comes through there and then you just line up the four little tabs and clip that into place and just pull your bobbin thread to make sure that's nicely coming through there installing the free motion darning foot is a little bit different to your standard uh, so this lever here will end up over top of this little bar here on the needle bar right beside the screw needle clamp, clamp screw and the foot comes in from behind this time onto the this fork here goes over the foot bar screw so I've got the lever on top and then just spring loaded too so it, you know we'll want to uh, resist there so just push that in like that and then tighten tighten this here I would also thread down here like that so you've got the top thread coming down under the foot here and you've got the bottom thread coming up through the throat plate and the feed dog plate there. Just make sure that you've got your machine set correctly so we'll go back to stitch one um, that's so that we don't get any zigzagging come back off buttonhole down to zero would be fine. Uh, stitch length doesn't matter because the feed dogs have no effect press the foot down. I would be tempted to turn the machine over a few times just to make sure everything's in order. And let's go. probably should have used a contrasting thread there it's a little bit hard to see but yep that's done a nice job there now remove the little plate there and the darning foot I'll just quickly show you the zip foot attachment zip foot it's adjustable but in the straight stitch you can see that it's just glancing well not glancing but it's very close to the side of this foot here which is what you want uh, that's one thing about a zip foot is when you've installed one it pays to turn the machine over to make sure that the needles are lined correctly now uh, if you want to use the other side of the foot you just slide the foot like so Bring the needle down so you can see how close it is and that's the left hand side for zips uh, stitch length about two and a half and there we go so as far as maintenance goes, uh, they're pretty, pretty reliable machines. You don't really see a lot that goes wrong. What can happen is these um, pneumatic foot controllers, the ear foot controllers, can get uh, punctured. Also, there's a an ear, um, there's like a little ear pouch in in this internals as well, which pushes the little plunger for the speed control. That can leak. I've seen one of those go as well. Uh, the parts are still available, so no, no problem there. And as far as getting in to clean the machine, you know, just open the door here, get your fingers in behind and under the plate here. Pull that up, it just clips off. You can get your uh, cleaning brush 
uh, down in here, give the feed dogs a bit of a clean. Oh, banana cleaning brush. Is that sacrilege? Using a banana cleaning brush on an elna. Ooh. Uh, oil points, there's one here. I won't show you the whole lot, um, but there's, there's also another one down in here. I'll pop this back in here, it just clips back in by the way. Tip the machine back, push it in, it just latches in. And underneath you can take this one screw here off and this whole cover here will pull off. You get into there and clean. Putting the plate back on is just a matter of lining up the two lugs there. Pushing, good firm push to click it in. Two screws to get the lid off. Fairly simple. Now the lid won't come right off because the handle is actually hinged to the body of the machine here. So you can only get it sort of back that far. You can get the handle off. There's a circlip here. Just unclip the circlip, take the washer off, slide the handle that way and the whole block can come off then. Oil, oil the needle bar, foot bar, the linkages, things like that, just for basic maintenance. You don't want to go spraying too much oil around um, just make sure you get the oil in the right place now there's a hole in the top here and you'd be forgiven for thinking that's an oil hole but it's not and ironically um, it is actually to do with the bulb so you definitely don't want to put oil around there what that's for is for the screwdriver here to pull, push that down so I'm pushing down with the screwdriver you might see the bulb pop out there just enough to get your fingers onto it and it's to, it's a bayonet type so it pushes in and turns like a old school uh, light fitting so there we go is a uh, look at the Elna Air Electronic uh, TSP now there are other models there's the SU model the Air Electronic SU that uh, has a flap here that you can um, open up and install uh, pattern cam. Uh, actually, I've got one. Yeah, excuse the condition, but um, <laughs> this is an SU and it has a little door here and you can pop in cams. And if that looks familiar, uh, that's because it has been around this mechanism here, the Elnograph. It's been around since the 50s. And you'll see on some of my other machine videos, likes of the Elna. Supermatic the, from the 50s and the Elna Star Series from the 60s, they had this mechanism here. So a brilliant machine, I highly recommend uh, these machines, they're very good, fast, smooth, reliable, great for beginners. So if you see one, grab it, you can't go wrong. And thank you very much for watching.